17th of April, the year 2024. Welcome to Capital Newspeed, bringing you to speed with stories making headless. My name is Fidal Kizito. The newly refurbished Uhuru and Central Parks will not be available for political activities. This follows a memorandum of understanding sent between the Ministry of Defense and the Nairobi County Government. Defense Cabinet Secretary Adin Duale told the Senate that the decision was taken to preserve the Green Spaces newly renovated state. The park along with Central Park had been closed in 2022 to facilitate renovations initiated by the defunct Nairobi Metropolitan Services. That park will never again be used by politicians to address rallies. It's out of bound. So one of the reasons you said why we removed is that uh, those of us who are in the political class will look for another park, we look for another venue. Uhuru Park and Central Park belongs to the citizens of Nairobi and other Kenyans that during the weekend when they want to enjoy, we have a choice between going to a mall or going to a park. Uhuru Park has long been a focal point in Kenya's political landscape, hosting events that have shaped the nation's history. The recreation park has in the past played host to swearing in of President Mwai Kibaki as Kenya's third president after he won the 202 elections, paving way for the peaceful transfer of power from Daniel Arab Moi, who had ruled for 24 years. Another historic moment was the promulgation of the 2010 constitution. Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Nakumincha has once again urged medical practitioners and doctors to suspend the strike and return to work. She told the Senate that the negotiation will be accelerated once the medics have resumed their duties, adding that the industrial action was threatening the lives of millions of Kenyans. Nakumincha added that engaging in shouting matches among the concerned parties was not only unhealthy but also dangerous for the nation. The CA stated that the national government has fully complied with the six issues that relate to it, citing that the remaining 13 issues in the 2017 CBA falls under the mandate of the counties. I want to confirm that the ministry has received confirmment from a national treasury of release of 200 million towards payment of the postgraduate registrar fee arrears. The ministry has also requested SRC to advise on the demand by the clinical officers union to have the risk allowance increase. We understand that this is going to have an impact on the overall budget, and that is why we have requested SRC to give guidelines. Once SRC gives the guidelines, then the ministry will be in a position to work towards implementation. The ministry has also requested Public Service Commission to review the clinical officer's career progression guidelines so that this can be communicated to them. She maintained that the stipends for medical interns will remain fixed at 70,000 shillings. Nakumichi announced that the ministry will begin taking count of interns who have reported to their stations from Thursday. Finally, former Muranga Governor Mwangi Wairia and two others have obtained court orders barring their arrest in an urgent application at the High Court. Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission says it's pursuing the six suspects, including the former governor, who have failed to honor summons to appear before it this morning. The Antigraph Agency has in the meantime confirmed the arrest of Wairia's wife, Jen Kimani, and her brother, Solomon Kimani, who it says had suspects in the 140 million shillings Muranga County Graft case. Wairia is among the eight former county bosses facing charges from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions of alleged procurement fraud during the period between 2015 and 2016. For more of these and other stories, log into www.capitalfm.co.k slash news. My name is Vidal Kizito.